best thing to understand the conduction abnormalities to evaluate the conduction between the atrium and the ventricle. So this is why we are going to start with AV blocks. When the conduction is altered, the correlation between the P and the QRS is altered. The AV blocks can be differentiated to the incomplete or complete block. The complete one means third degree block. The incomplete, such as the grade one or first degree or grade two as a second degree block, that is differentiated similarly to the previous in the introduction as a Mobis type one, Mobis type two blocks and two to one and high degree blocks. Let's start with the first degree AV block. In this case, every P wave gets conducted, but slower. The RR and PP interval are equal. This is why the heart rate is unchanged, it's rhythmic. The PR intervals are prolonged, but every PR is the same, and it's longer than 0.2 seconds. Normally, the PR interval is varies depending on the heart rate, if you do have tachycardia, the PR is shorter. When you do have slower heart rate, the PR is longer. Another thing that is going to alter the PR interval is the age. In the elderly, usually the PR is longer than in young one. The first degree AV block can be caused by mainly ischemia, infarction, myocarditis, rheumatoid arthritis, and fever and different drugs. When you are looking at the normal tracings, you do see that every QRS proceeds with a P wave, initiated with a P wave, and the PR is constant and the RR is constant. When we do have first degree block, only the difference is that the PR interval is longer, nothing else. And if you do not have any normal path, you won't see any differences. As you see here in these tracings, we do have the rate rhythmicity. The rate is one, two, three, four, and a little bit more. So it meaning that around 70. The next question, do we have P wave? Yes, we do have P wave that P comes regularly. If you get a paper and marks the PP interval and shift it, you can see nicely that every P generated rhythmically in a sinus node. However, the conduction through the AV is longer. It was from the beginning of the QR P wave till the beginning of the QRS. It's longer than 0.2 seconds. In our case, it's almost 36, 0.36 or 0.35 seconds. Looking at this graph, again, that's a rhythmic one. The rate is around 1, 2, 3, 4, 75. We do see P wave in lead number 2 and negative in AVR. So that represents a sinus activation. Every P gets conducted because every P followed by QRS complexes. However, the PR interval is longer. Second degree AV blocks. In second degree blocks, we do have some P's that are not conducted. So this rhythm is not regular. The RR intervals are not the same. The atrial rate is higher than a ventricle one and arrhythmic. The types, such as Mobitz type one, when the PR intervals are not the same, gradient gradually longer and longer, and after we do have an unconducted one. The last PR is longer than a first conducted PR. Mobis type two, the PR intervals are equal, can be normal, can be longer, but they are not changing. So the last and the first, the same. The longest part, when we do have an unconduction, the RR is twice as long as the other RR intervals. In a case of Mobis type one, this RR intervals, this is a long gap, is less than twice as the last RR interval. Let's talk about first Mobis type 1 second degree AV block. 
So the impasse conduction is getting worse until an impasse coming from the atrium doesn't get conducted. The PR intervals progressively gets longer within the cycle. The block is usually located in the AV node, so so-called proximal block. So that's a good prognosis. ECG features, the last conducted PR interval is longer than the first conducted PR interval. So when we are going to follow, that's arrhythmic as you see here, we mark the PPs and we can see that PPs are regular and we do have an unconducted PPs. So that means second degree AV block. Now let's look at the last conducted PR and let's compare to the next, the first conducted PR. You do see the difference. The last one is longer than the first one, representing a first, a second degree AV block, Mobitz type 1. So this duration, this pause, is shorter than twice of the last RR interval. Summarizing with this little uh, cartoon, PR is getting longer and longer when we do have a drop bit and after start with a normal PR. So the last is longer than a first one. And the dropped RR interval is less than twice as the last RR interval. This is how we can differentiate Mobius type 1. The RR gets gradually shorter in a typical Mobius type 1 second degree AV block. If you are looking at this little graph, and if and you want to if you learn to express the RR interval using the PP interval and the PR intervals, and because the PR1 is less than PR2, PR2 less than PR3, if you are going to summarize this, you will see immediately that the PR2 minus PR1 is bigger than PR3 minus PR2, meaning that the R, the first RR interval, bigger than a second RR interval and the third RR interval. In our case, when we are going to evaluate uh, AV block, this is not needed to express. It's only good if we want to evaluate, for example, the sinoatrial blocks, because the sinoatrial blocks cannot be seen the sinus activation. So there's no A of the when the depolarization is starting, only we can see the B when the atrium is depolarized. So similarly to here, because the B is a QRS complex. So if you want to somehow diagnose second degree AV block Mobis type 1 based on the QRS distances, this is how can we do it. Looking at this graph, this is arrhythmic. The rate is around 70, 65. We do have P waves, so positive in 2, negative in AVR. Make a note that this P a little bit taller than 2.5 mm, representing some kind of hypertrophy of the right atrium. When you are looking at the regularity of the P's, that's regular, coming rhythmically. However, we notice that we do have an unconducted P's. All right, so that means second degree AV block. Looking at the last conducted PR comparing to the first one, immediately you can say that this is a Mobis type 1 second degree AV block. Looking at the axis, one is positive, AVF is the smallest one, so the axis is around zero. Second degree AV block, Mobitz type 2, or the distal type. Here, the PR intervals are constant, can be longer, can be normal, but it's constant. Usually, it gets worsened. Mostly, it's caused by ischemia, and it has a bad prognosis, so this type of block needs pacemaker implantation immediately. So when you are looking at this graph, you can see that the PR intervals are constant. So the R1 and R2 and R is the same. And when we do have this drop interval, exactly the same as the twice as the RR interval. This is how we can diagnose a second degree AV block Mobius type 2. So the last PR, the same as the first one. 
2 to 1 AV block. In this case, in every second P is not followed by Q or S. Now, in this case, it should be determined whether Mobius type 1 or Mobius type 2, but in clinician, usually they consider that's a worse situation and they put some pacemaker in it immediately. This kind of rhythm is rhythmic. So, because every second, however, is bradycardic. So, we do have twice as much P's as QRS complexes. In the green arrows shows the P wave, and we do have a very slow QRS complexes. Looking at this graph, is similar to the previous one, rhythmic one, the rate is very slow, and we do have twice as much P as QRS complexes. High degree AV block. In this case, two or more consecutive P waves are not conducted, but conduction still occurs sometimes. So we do have a very loose connection between the atrium and the ventricle. However, sometimes we do have a conducted bit. Now, this conduction ratio can be constant, can be 3 to 1, 4 to 1, or rare, unpredictable. Ventricular rate is slower than the atrial rate. And because more P not followed by QRS, only one case the patient could survive when a ventricle escape rhythm is maintaining the heart pump function. If this uh, escape center originated from the lower of the AV node, that is a higher chance that we do have a higher rate. But mostly it's coming out from the ventricle. Now, when we do have this escape ventricle rhythm, that's rhythmic, but this rhythmicity is interrupted by the supraventricular capture bit, whatever is conducted. Sometimes these two bits activate the ventricle together, and that's called the fusion bit. By looking at this graph, the escape bits are regularly coming. The fusion bit comes at the same time. But the capture bit, that as you see here, that the shape is a supraventricular, so narrow shape, this did not come in time. So the regularity is capped during the escape rhythm, and capture bit makes it a rhythmic. And sometimes when the escape center and the conducted bit activates the ventricle, we do have a different shape for the QRS complex, and this is the fusion bit. Third degree block, there is no connection between the atrial and the ventricular depolarization. None of the P wave are conducted. Only one thing how the patient survives when an escape rhythm starts. Ectopic pacemaker's rhythm can originate from the low, uh, lower AV junctional or junction or in the ventricle. ECG features, there is no relationship between the P's and the QRS complex, so the PR interval is random. And you can see that the P is located inside the QRS or inside the T wave. And that's called AV dissociation. Here you can see that a very nice ventricle escape rhythm. And you do see that the P's that coming rhythmically and some P located inside the QRS complex. This is similar. A lot of P's and the P is located in the QRS complex or in the T waves, and we do have a escape rhythm that originated from the lower junctional segment. Here, similarly, except we do have a ventricular escape rhythm. 